I know that I came here to preach this. And will you entertain that same presence of the Lord here? Don't feel like I'm doing the wrong thing. It's, it's going to be okay. I believe there's nobody else that I know of that I try to take a hands-off approach, not always up in the service, just want God to move. But I really feel today that I have a message for somebody, and if that one person hears it, if I connect with that one person God sent me here to talk to, You know, here's the thing. We've all been blessed. I've been blessed today. How many of you feel revived already by being in the house of the Lord? I want to direct your attention quickly to a verse of Scripture. I realize our choir will be coming in, and it's going to be okay. We're going to have another great service tonight be preaching in the service tonight. We're glad to have Brother Mark Grisham here, a good friend of mine, longtime friend, great man of God. Uh, Matthew 14 and 30. Just one verse I'm going to read here. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And today I just want to speak to you from a subject of a message for sinking souls. Beginning to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to move in the next few minutes of this service. God, just let me deliver what's burning in my heart right now. Let the power of the Holy Ghost continue to move in this service. And let that one or more people that you intended this for let them receive it, Lord, with gladness and believe that you love them. Let the power of the Holy Ghost move in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. God bless you. This verse of Scripture comes from a story that has been preached so many times. Peter, seeing Jesus walking on the water, challenges the Lord, if it is you, Lord, bid me come. Jesus answered, come. And suddenly, Peter, in a moment of faith, gets out of the boat. But after he sees the storm raging around him and the wind being boisterous, the waves crashing, he begins to sink. And in the moment where it seemed to be disaster, he cried to the Lord. I'm impressed with the power of prayer. I'm more impressed with the simplicity of prayer. And how God hears simple prayers. I've never been one who could make an art of praying as far as people being impressed with my prayers. 
but the power of a simple prayer to God. This prayer was nothing elaborate. It was nothing outstanding. It does not go down in history as the greatest, one of the greatest prayers that's ever been prayed. It pales in comparison to the prayer that Solomon prayed at the dedication of the temple. But the power of this simple prayer is one that God hears. He didn't have time to go into a lot of detail. The Bible said that he cried to the Lord, Lord, save me. Can I tell you today that that simple prayer, those three words, can make a difference in your circumstances. In your life, it can change things for good if you are willing to cry to God and say, Lord, save me. We find the plight of man without God in Psalms 142. He said, I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and with my voice unto the Lord I did make my supplication. I poured out my complaint before him. I showed before him my trouble. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. In the way wherein I walked have they privily laid snare for me. I looked on my right hand, and there was no man that could know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. I cried unto thee, O Lord. Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I Bring my soul out of prison that I may praise thy name. The righteousness shall compass me about, for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. Let me just tell you, sometimes you can look around and there's nobody on the right hand, nobody on the left, and it seems like there is absolutely nowhere to turn. Let me present to you the power of a simple prayer cried out to the Lord because when you cry to him, he is going to hear that prayer. You know what the Bible tells me, and I kind of like to think about this sometimes during a church service, that all of heaven is watching. All of heaven is listening, that all of heaven is waiting on one person to cry out to the Lord. The Bible says in Luke 15 and 7, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. More than 90 and 9 just persons which need no repentance. You think, oh, God loves, God loves all these wonderful people who attend this church on a regular basis, all these folks who are obviously in the church. You think he's so happy about it. And probably a little while ago, there was more than a 100 of you in these aisles worshiping the Lord. Can I tell you that all of heaven didn't rejoice when the saints get out and worship? But when there's just one lost soul, just one lost sinner, just one person that needs God, that says, Lord, help me, the Bible says that heaven breaks out into joy.
One of my favorite psalms is found in 107. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. Now notice, they wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. And he delivered them out of their distresses. And he led them forth by the right way that they may go to a city of habitation. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. I want you to notice when they were lonely, when they were in the wilderness, when they were hungry, and when they were thirsty and they were in trouble, the Bible said they cried to the Lord. Can I tell you he's just waiting to hear your cry? For he satisfied the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness such as sit in darkness in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron. You know, sometimes we find ourselves in a situation because of our own choices. They rebelled against the words of the Lord and contemned the counsel of the Most High. Therefore, He brought them down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. I want to tell you, this just keeps being repeated in this chapter. Shoot me a little juice up here if you don't mind. This keeps being repeated in this chapter. The problem and the solution. The bad things that come, sometimes they are a result of our own actions. People don't live right. They don't do right. They make the wrong choice. All of a sudden, they find themselves in that, uh, in that reaping time when they have sown uh, the bad seeds of life and they see the harvest of all of those bad things that they have done is suddenly coming to pass. That's what happened here. And the Bible said, the Bible said that they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. The same words. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and break their bands in sunder. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he hath broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. Come on now. When did he do it? He did it when they cried. Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. The soul abhorreth all manner of meat, and they draw near to the gates of death. And then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. And he saved them out of their... There's the same old verse. It's here again, another circumstance. But he's saying, if you'll cry out in your trouble, that in that situation, that he he will save you out of your distresses. I'm preaching to somebody. I came to tell you that the Lord is willing to save. All he's waiting to do is just to hear you say, Lord, save me. Verse 20, he sent his word and healed them, delivered them out of their destructions. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let's go to verse 25. We'll just skip. 
he commandeth and raiseth, raiseth the stormy wind, which lifteth up the waves thereof. They mount up to heaven. They go down again to the depths. Their soul is melted because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at wit's end. Let me just tell you something. Sometimes you come to wit's end. Sometimes you come to the very end when you don't know what else to do. You feel like there's no hope. You feel like it's all, all for naught. You feel like there's no possible way to make it through. Let me just tell you, if you're to the wit's end place, if you've come to the place where you think I can't take it anymore, I don't think I can go any farther. Let me just tell you, I came here as a voice of hope this morning. I came here to tell you that God sent me here to tell you that if you cry out, the Bible said, then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he bringeth them out of their distresses. Let me tell you something. All he's waiting on is somebody to say, Lord, I need you. Lord, help me. Lord, I've got to have you. And he maketh the storm to come, so that the waves thereof are still. Then are they glad because they be quiet, and he brings them into their desired haven. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Yes, it's a message. For sinking souls, going down, descending, spiraling. The book of Jonah holds a lot of messages. Some messages are very relevant for us today. Jonah, after having God tell him the way to go, chose to go another way. He found himself in a storm on a boat headed away from the will of God. Finally, the storm got so vicious that the sailors realized this is not normal. God must be in this. When they cast lots, they found that through providence that the Lord showed them it was Jonah. And Jonah admitted, I was supposed to go to Nineveh. I bought a ticket to go to Tarshish. And if you'll just throw me overboard, all this will stop. You know, Jonah probably thought, well, go ahead and kill me, Lord. I'm, I'm done for. It's all over. They threw him overboard, and just like he said, the storm settled down. But what Jonah didn't count on when he was going down, about to, about to bring water into his lungs and, and slip off into eternity, about that time he looks, and there's Jaws. Big Jaws. The Lord prepared a big fish, swallowed him. Not so quick, Jonah. God's not through with you yet. You know what? There's some of you who sit in this under the sound of my voice. God's not through with you yet. He's not finished. It's not over. You, th you think, well, well, I just don't think I can live another day. Let me just tell you, it's not over until he says it's over. And as long as you're alive, you need to understand that God is listening for your prayer. Oh, Jonah, as bad as he was, as wrong as he was, going as far as he went, I'm just going to tell you that the Bible said, Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from inside the fish. And he said, I cried out. 
to the Lord in my great trouble. And he answered me. I called to you from the land of the dead. And Lord, you heard me. I don't care how bad it's, it is in your life. I don't care how low you've gone. It makes no difference. You may think you're a walking dead man. I want to tell you, out of the bars that surround your soul, you can cry out to God, and God will hear your voice. You threw me into the ocean depths, and I sank down to the heart of the sea. Come on, it's a sinking feeling when you're going away from God. It's a sinking feeling when you don't have God in your life. It's a sinking feeling when you're going the wrong direction. It's a sinking feeling when you've been thrown overboard into a sea that was stirred up by the Lord himself. I'm going to tell you, I have a message for sinking souls today. Cry out to God. Cry out to God. I sank down to the heart of the sea. The mighty waves engulfed me. I was buried beneath your wild and stormy waves. Then I said, Oh Lord, you have driven me from your presence. Yet will I once more look toward your holy temple. I'm going to start thinking about God. I'm going to start thinking about his house. I'm going to start looking toward that holy place where you move and where you dwell. I sank beneath the waves. The waters closed over me. Seaweed wrapped itself around my head. I sank down to the very roots of the mountains. I was imprisoned in the earth whose gates locked shut forever. But you, O oh Lord, snatched me from the jaws of death as my life was slipping away. I remembered the Lord and my earnest prayer went out to you in your holy temple, those who worship false gods turn their back on all God's mercy. But I will offer to you with songs of praise. I'll fulfill my vows for my salvation comes from the Lord alone. Let me preach to you today. God can save you. I don't care how low. I don't care how bad. I don't care how dark. I don't care how deep. He's able to hear your cry. Then the Lord ordered the fish. You see, God made the planet. He made everything in the planet. And it works only when he says it's supposed to work. That old fish thought he had a mind of his own. But all of a sudden, he gets orders from headquarters. The Lord said, okay. Oh, fish, I prepared you. You've done your job. Now, go throw up. The Lord gave him a stomach virus. Have you ever had one? Come on. He spat Jonah out on the beach. He was still slimy. He still smelled like fish. Not the outside of a fish. Sometimes when we are turned loose from the world, we stink. We smell bad. We look bad. We need a shower. 
We need cleaning up. We need the Holy Ghost to wash over us. Come on, you know what I'm talking about. I believe the Lord wants to pick somebody up. You feel like there's no hope. You feel like you've gone to the bottom. You feel like you're looking up through the bottom. But let me just tell you, in the depths of the sea, God's ear was still in tune. And when uh, old Jonah, old Jonah couldn't really look toward the temple, but in his heart, he was thinking about God. He was thinking about that place where he had worshiped the Lord, where he had offered sacrifice, that place that he looked to every time he prayed. I'm just going to tell you something. Some of you need to look to him. You need to realize it's not the waves. It's not the fish. It's not the storm. It's not the problem. But I'm going to tell you it's God. Waiting for your cry. When he saw the wind boisterous, He was afraid. And as he began to sink, he cried, Lord, save me. There are some of you today who need to try the power of a simple, sincere prayer. To God. Lord, save me. If you don't save me, I'll never be saved. If you don't help me, I'm beyond help. If you don't do it, I have no one else to turn to. I love the next verse. It says, and immediately. Immediately. Everybody say immediately. I am talking about a God that can give you immediate help. An immediate change. Look. Look, right now by that clock back there, It's 1232. By 1235, your life can change. Oh, oh, I'm not sure that I could pray that kind of prayer. Look, it doesn't take anything fancy. You just open your heart, realize your need, realize your hopelessness. And reach out to the only one that can change you. He asked the question, can the leper, can the leopard change its spots? Can the Ethiopian change the color of his skin? But he said, I can put a new heart in you. I can take the stony heart. And give you a heart of flesh. I can make old things pass away. And I can make all things become new. I'm talking about a newborn again experience in your life where your life is completely renovated from top to bottom. Suddenly, what didn't seem possible is absolutely possible. What couldn't have ever happened will happen. And it all hinges upon one prayer that just says, Lord, help me. Help me. Help me. Whoever you are in this building, you know I've been talking to you. I know and you know. I challenge you as we stand. Why don't you come and pray that simple prayer?
It's a prayer of surrender. It's a prayer of acknowledgement that, Lord, I can't do it on my own. It's a prayer of saying, i got to have you. I can't do it without you. I need change, and I need it now. Lord, save me. You can't figure it all out. You can't chart your own course anymore. You don't have the ability to walk on water. You need a miracle, and you need it now. Your only option is to look to Jesus and say, Lord, help me. I need your help. I need you, Jesus. i got to have you. I believe you're going to come right now. Church, would you pray with me just for us a, a, a few moments? Let's pray together that the Lord would move in a special way in this place. I believe that there are people who really need to, in faith, reach out to God and say, God, I need you. I've got to have you. Lord, save me. Save me. Save me. Save me. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a host of people already that's come to cry out to him. Why don't you join them? Why don't you step out and say, this is my day. God sent me here, and he's going to do the work. You see, let me say something. It's not up to you to change your life. Because you can't do it. It's up to him. But your cry says, Lord, it's beyond me. I need your help. People are still coming. I need you, Jesus. That's it. Let's pray. Let's pray. Just pray with me just for a moment.
下。